As a follow-up to my comparison of Hardware 3 versus Hardware 4 with full self-driving, I tested actually Smart Summon to see if there are any significant differences between the two platforms. Now, I have posted a lot of videos about actually Smart Summon, probably more than any other vlogger out there. And I have had a lot of people come back to me in the comments saying, mine doesn't work very well, it's useless, it stops, it stutters, the connectivity is bad. I have so many people that are always complaining about it. Now, I'm not going to flat out discredit everybody's experiences, but I have to say it is very, extremely important that you turn on the summon standby. Without that setting turned on, yes, it will stutter. Yes, it will have reduced performance. Yes, you may witness connectivity issues it's extremely important to turn that setting on. A lot of people think that that just helps to keep the cameras ready. Well, not only that, it really does improve the performance. I'm gonna show you where that setting is right now. To turn on Summon Standby, you go into the menu system, go to the Autopilot menu, scroll down, and select Standby Mode, and make sure that this is turned on. Very important. There are other settings in here as well. You can configure these however you'd like. I like to keep mine at 20 inches, which is the default. It won't work to come out of your driveway, for example, or out of your garage. Really, full self-driving is the best option if you have hardware 4 for that. This feature is intended for parking lots. Now, that's exactly what I did. Now, I have not tested hardware 4 very much, but I had access to my mother's 2026 Model Y Juniper for a weekend, so I decided to take it to two parking lots and tested it three different times. Each and every time, I didn't have any issues. Now, this is me being patient with the technology, relying on the fact that it will eventually come to me, not freaking out and panicking when it's not doing something that I don't expect it to. Now, this is half the battle. Most people that have complaints, and there are a lot of them, don't like the way that it does certain things. And it's really justified because there have been situations where people in the parking lot have pulled out their phone to call 911 because the car is freaking them out and they don't know what's going on. And also the car is, in some cases, creating a little bit of a traffic jam. Now, why would it do that if this is proven to be a very, very good feature? Well, it's extremely safe. In fact, it's so safe that it slows down considerably more than full self-driving does in parking lots. That's a good and a bad thing. As you're going to see in my first clip here, it hesitates around a gentleman that's getting inside of his car, and he notices that there's no driver in the driver's seat. There's somebody right behind the car, and they're patiently waiting for my car to figure out what's going on. But the guy loading groceries into his car is really kind of causing a little bit of a hang-up. Now, I did not really panic or anything. I just kept holding down the button. I knew it would eventually come. And sure enough, within a second later, it started moving again. The other main issue that I'm hearing people complain about is connectivity issues. It has a bad habit if you don't have good cellular reception with your phone to slow down or flat out stop working while it's in the middle of its route to come to you. The other thing that I'm hearing a lot of is public roads. If you're using actually Smart Summon near a public road or the parking lot is near a public road entrance or something like that, it will actually slow down and stop. It will flat out not operate near public roads. Again, a safety feature. So a lot of mixed feelings about this technology. It seems that the people that don't like it are a lot more vocal and opinionated than those that do. And I love it. I absolutely use it all the time and I can't say enough good things about it. And I think you're gonna see in this video exactly why I feel that way. It is a very awesome and convenient feature to use and enjoy. And I highly encourage everyone who has it to at least test it out, try it a couple times, find a parking lot where it works well, and then have some fun with it. These first three clips are with Hardware 4. Now the maps data is identical. This is FSD version 14.2.2 for what it matters, which I really don't think it does. And I'm testing here in a Sam's Club parking lot. I test twice here, and then I move on to test in a Culver's parking lot. Now you can see this gentleman getting into his car.
Electric vehicle, nobody there. And it's hesitating. I'm getting a little bit anxious, but I trust it enough because I use it all the time that I allow it to hesitate and pause for safety, and eventually it takes off. This second case, no issues whatsoever. I love having the multiple cameras set up so that you can see what the car is seeing and understand the surroundings a little bit better. And sometimes when it pulls up like this, it will dart into another aisle for safety and it feels like it's running away from you, but it's not. Other cases, it will politely pull over and it always puts its hazard lights on, which I love, but they don't stay on long enough. It's gotten so good now where it doesn't block any lanes, but if another car is behind the car and it's going too slow, sometimes that can be a nuisance. So just be aware of that, know your surroundings before you go and use it, and be ready to run out to your car. I will be honest, it's not perfect every single time. The number of times that I have to run out to my car, well, it's around 1%, I would say, but it does happen. Okay, I'm at a Culver's. I'm gonna show you my car is right over there. It's not that far away, but what I'm gonna do is walk. Basically, it has to reverse out at an angle and then it's gonna force itself down this way. I'm gonna have it go all the way around this restaurant. It has to combat with that drive-through there and some of the traffic in the drive-through and go all the way around to meet me on the other side. So let's test this out here. Okay, here we are. I'm going to hit the come to me button. It says preparing. There the cameras pop up. And the car is backing out of its spot here. Now Hardware 3 will also leave from angled parking spaces, which is interesting because FSD will not do that at all. And for that matter, with Hardware 3, FSD won't leave any parking space. What's interesting here is that there are three paths around Culver's. There's one that goes through the drive through and there's quite a long line of cars. It misses that, but the real question mark in my mind was, is it going to go to the right and kind of into the parking lot area, or is it going to go into the middle? and it chooses to go through the middle area, which is the correct path to take, to route itself around the Culver's restaurant to come and meet me. And you're gonna see it safely pulls all the way around an additional corner of the building to then stop and wait for me to come inside. So it's choosing to go around a little bit further. It thinks I'm a little bit further over this way, which is fine. It's getting to a good spot to pull over safely and allow me to jump in. And for Hardware 3, I'm in a Home Depot parking lot and I turn on Summon and the car comes to me very smoothly, very accurately. I've tested this in so many parking lots that I'm not going to post a whole bunch of Hardware 3 examples, but in conclusion, 
I'm going to have to say that the performance was very, very similar. I did not notice any significant differences between the two. Now, are you going to get a lot of use out of it? That's up to you to decide. If it's something that you like or you feel that you would like to show off to friends or just use on a casual basis, then yeah, I would say give it a try. It's $99 a month. Now, that's not the cheapest amount of money, but if you're going on a long trip, for example, sometimes that payment is worth it. I hope that the price of full self-driving will come down in the future, and I hope that a lot more people can enjoy this. And more than anything, I know we're all waiting for Banish, which is when you can have FSD bring you to the front door of a restaurant, a parking lot, grocery store, wherever you're going, get out of the car, and then have it go find a parking spot and park itself. You don't have to worry about the parking at all, and you don't, also don't have to walk to the front door. Now, yes, this is a lazy man's parlor trick, if you want to call it that, but it is absolutely convenient, and this is going to help a large number of people with disabilities in the future. Think of the elderly population. There's so many use cases for this technology, and I really can't wait until Banish comes. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Please consider subscribing and smash that like button, and Happy New Year. Thank you.